On the night of April 26, 1986, a massive fire broke out in the fourth unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. Thus began the largest man-made disaster in the history of the nuclear power industry. There was an accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. One of the nuclear reactors was damaged. Measures are being taken to eliminate the consequences of the accident. Victims are being helped. A government commission has been established, TASS reported at 9 p.m. on April 28, 1986. This is the first official information about the accident in the Soviet media. It took almost three days for the accident to happen. On the night of April 26, 1986, there was an explosion and a massive fire at Unit 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The total release of radioactive substances into the environment is estimated at 380 million curies. The irradiation spread over 200,000 square kilometers, with Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia being the hardest hit. A cloud of cesium, iodine, and other radioactive material covered most of Europe. Elevated radiation levels were recorded in Norway, Sweden and Finland, among others. Radioactive fallout fell in several regions. The disaster was the largest in the history of nuclear power. How many people died as a result of the disaster is not known with certainty. You could see the bones in some people's faces. Alexander Nikolaevich Shabutkin Participant of liquidation of the Chernobyl disaster consequences, worked at the epicenter of the accident from November 6, 1986 to January 15, 1987. I was already 30 years old, I had a military specialty as a reconnaissance chemist, I studied it, I knew it. And a lot of others were drafted from all over the country, and everybody thought everything was fine, the birds were flying, everything was fine. The Afghans were a special case, they thought they were heroes, they came from one tragic case here. They didn't understand, everything seems normal here, there's food, singing, there's no war. And after a few days, they became, you know, a dark mass. They were already droopy, they were not talking, they were like everyone else. At first they were like, I'm a communist. And after a few days, they were just like everybody else. Some of them didn't wash, some of them were just like everybody else. More than 340,000 troops from more than 210 military units were deployed to the crash site. Nearly half of them served at Chernobyl from April to December 1986. And as every minute fell out, I ran to wash up. Between the third and fourth blocks we had an eight-story bathhouse, the first floors had a laundry, and the fifth, sixth privates washed there, the seventh, eighth officers and higher up there on. I worked directly at the wall, where the sarcophagus itself is, there's a second, even you may not have pulled up yet, and you're already being told, run away, go away. That's it. You got your dose. And I tried to wash more often. When you get out of the shower, they don't give you what you came in with. You're completely provided for. And some people didn't take a shower for weeks. And the radiation builds up. Radiation doesn't forgive those mistakes. It's gonna get so bad, it's gonna get so ugly. You could see the bones in some people's faces. That's carelessness. First of all, nobody explained anything there, you got up at 4 in the morning, went to the station, arrived, fell down, woke up again. All in all, at the limit of human capabilities. A lot of people were killed, of course. First of all, the whole country was involved. No one knows how many went through Chernobyl. There were millions. We had a rotation of troops, we had the 26th Brigade, they were changed every day. Can you imagine what kind of rotation there was four and a half thousand in the brigade? And how many were assemblies, and how many were regiments, and it all had to be changed, it was a horror. A lot of people were killed, of course. Especially, the young ones. I was with soldiers, one now, from Lukovitsi, I communicate with, he is bad very, and there was a guy handsome, tall. He has a head, he forgets where he's going. The chairman is already asking me, Sash, what to do with him? It's a pity, it's a pity for the young guys, 
we thought they were just kids. Many of them have already gone away. I had friends from all the towns in Yegoryevsk, they left a long time ago. Only their memories remain. I remember, I look at the photos, there were some films with them, I met them at Matinsko Cemetery, and now I don't see almost anyone there anymore. According to official data, over 600,000 people were involved in elimination of the consequences of the accident. Most of the work was done in 1986 to 1987. The truth will never be told. About the fact that they drank there, they drank. Yeah, we used to have a few too. We had the 25th Ukrainian Brigade there, there were repair bases, what could they not drink? They were drinking there. Because that was the commander. It all depends on what unit you are in. But what do we need to drink, when here you leave it for, come here, you fall down, if you get to the pillow, and that's it. In the morning we get up again at 4, a tin for 4, have a snack, drink tea, and off we go. To the station. There was no fairy tales there. There was war. The truth will never be told. We weren't allowed to have cameras back then. And now they say, we don't know. You would have given us those cameras, and we would have taken such pictures. And now you can make up whatever you want. We didn't ask for benefits. Now the last two I had, the police took them away from me, it was horrible. They could have put him in jail at any time. It was impossible to get them to admit that he was a liquidator, that he was disabled, that he had doses. They said, you want benefits. But we did not ask for those benefits, the state gave them to us, and then they took them away. Now what are the benefits? Everything. Everything was taken away from everyone. I told Medvedev when I was in the Kremlin. I said, we have everything. And the widows help them, the widows' children. So what? So they added 4,000 for the funeral. That's all. The most important thing is that there was a victory. Two wars. Berlin and Chernobyl. We worked around the clock. Guys were good. How many lives they sacrificed. To cover something like that in a few months. No other nation would do it. And even now they probably wouldn't do it. If something happens now, it's a different youth, a different nation. We don't learn from mistakes. On the street, only run. Participant of liquidation of consequences of the Chernobyl disaster, worked at the epicenter of the accident from September 16th till December 2nd, 1986. Head of construction of the shelter, the first sarcophagus over the fourth reactor. We had living quarters, we were in the HZTO, the liquid and solid waste storage facility. In the bunker next to the fourth block, we had living quarters, and from there all the cranes and concrete pumps were controlled by radio and television. In other words, we were sitting behind concrete walls and used TV cameras to control the machinery above the sarcophagus itself, because a human being could not go up there. 10,000 x-rays and more, you couldn't be there for a second. We did everything remotely. And outside only running, only running. Not like in American movies, Chernobyl there, they sit outside, they put a table, you can't have that. First of all, you can't see people. Just like now, because of the coronavirus, empty streets, the same thing, empty streets, people are all just indoors, not a single window in the room is open, everything is closed. And every day there is wet cleaning. In the rooms where there are people, the floors are covered with plastic, and this plastic is 10 centimeters on the wall which means that you can wet it all down and then clean it. Because the dust was radioactive all the time, not only in the street. A working day would sometimes be a minute. Or two minutes. They say, he is a Chernobyl cleaner, but he worked there for 20 days, for 20 minutes. They brought him in, he did some work for a minute, because there were 60 x-rays, he grabbed one x-ray, he came to the housing unit, that's it, he can't work anymore today. And he sits for six hours and waits for a bus to come, dirty, irradiated, at first, to take him to Chernobyl, changes his clothes, gets on a clean bus, and they take him to a clean zone. There's radiation everywhere you go outside, so they wore this pedal there all the time, they changed it eight times a day. 
and the clothes, I would put the new clothes on in the morning, tear off the labels. In the afternoon my deputy for radiation safety came to me, he would check and say, bring the chief engineer new clothes, and they would bring me new clothes again, and in the evening I would change them again. And sometimes that was enough for a day, two days. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.